Today we're going to walk through installing a Max Lighter custom 40 inch windshield light bar. With your light bar you're going to receive our Max Lighter brackets. These are the ones we're going to use so we'll set those aside for later. Two plugs for the light bar. We're going to also save these for later. A bag of H-block connectors which we will not need. These are the generic brackets that come with the light bar. We will not be using those either. In the hardware bag we're going to need to save the four bolts that come with crush washers on them. These two Allen keys and the two small Allen head bolts. You will not need these bolts and nuts for the install on a Bronco. All right, you'll receive 15 lights with your windshield light bar. Inside the box, we're gonna get this bag. It's gonna have our two bolts and nuts to mount the light to the light bar and an H block, which we will use, and then your light. Before we can put our lights onto our light bar, we'll have to start these bolts in. They go in the back and then the nuts have these groove sides that will go towards the bolt. And we just want to get these started. We chose to go with four amber lights. We're going to put two on either end of our light bar, which means that the end lights that have plugs on them are amber in our case. Um, you'll want to install a plug on either side of your light bar. Occasionally, we've had to make this hole a little bit bigger to fit the bolt. And this is just a small Allen head bolt with that wrench that came with our light kit earlier. Uh, we're going to use the H blocks that came with each individual light and these are going to connect all of our lights together like that and then slide these on to our light bar Once you've got all of your lights slid onto the light bar, um, I like to make sure that they're centered and then I'll tighten uh, the one in the center first. With the center one tightened, we can make sure that all of our lights are connected securely and then tighten our way from the inside out. We've got all of our lights daisy chained with those H blocks we installed earlier and plugs on both ends. We're gonna power both sides of the light bar. If you only run power to one side, the power is going to fizzle out before it makes it all the way across to the 15th light on the other side, and one side will be dim. So we're gonna feed power in both sides. I've got two 12 gauge red wires I'm gonna use for that. Uh, anything 14 gauge or thicker should be sufficient uh, for the amperage for this. Uh, we're gonna run 12. These will go connect to either plug run along the back of the light bar through our bracket on the passenger side where we're going to drill a hole into the truck, run our wires into the truck and ultimately into the engine bay where we'll put two relays under the hood and that's where they'll get power. And we will also have two 12 gauge black wires for our grounds. I'm going to use butt connectors with a good heat shrink with adhesive on the inside to keep all of the weather out. Um, you guys can use solder to build your wiring harness if you'd like. This is just what we use here. Now that I've got some of our wires connected, I'm going to start covering it with some weatherproof uh, wire covering. This is so that we don't get any water coming into our Bronco after we run our wires inside. I finished putting our harness together on the back of the light bar. We've got our power and ground coming off the plug on the driver's side. It runs in this channel that they provide in the light bar with our protective coating on it. Meets up with our second plug that also has its own separate power and ground. They come together, come off the passenger side where I've got about 10 to 12 feet of wire left over for our positive and maybe three feet for our ground. Um, we're gonna run this stuff into the truck so we wanna leave plenty of extra. We'll end up cutting that to length once we get there. With our wiring done and our light bar assembled, we are ready to get the truck ready for the light bar. First step's gonna be removing our passenger sun visor. We're gonna go ahead and just move that out of the way so we've got room to work. There's a plastic cover up here that covers a seven millimeter bolt. We'll go ahead and pry that off with a plastic pry tool, careful not to break it. And we can just move that out of the way. And 
And then this actually hooks on, so you'll want to rotate it forward to unhook that from the plastic trim. And then we've got a plug up here. Unplug that. I've always found it easiest to use pliers or something to push these metal pins in from the top. And that'll let you pull the piece off easier. And then right where these two pieces separate is where we're gonna get access underneath of this to run our wiring. These cover our windshield light bar mounting provisions, so we're gonna go ahead and remove these covers. There's a little plastic tab at the top to push in. The painted part comes off, and there's two 10 millimeter bolts. And then you can go ahead and save these for if you ever want to remove your light bar in the future. Underneath this cover, we've got two spot welds here. We're going to drill through this top one. There's a hole on the inside of the Bronco uh, that lines up with this that we'll be able to run our wires through. And that's also where the hole in the bracket lines up. So make sure to drill out that top spot weld. You want to use some kind of protective covering on your wires to go through the metal hole that you've drilled so that this doesn't cut the, ice, the insulation on the wires. Uh, we use a 13 30 seconds hole. That's what fits the wire covering we use. If you guys use something different, you might need a smaller or bigger hole to fit that. You'll also want to clean up all these metal shavings. Some will fall back here behind the windshield. We use compressed air to blow that out. If you leave them, Whenever it gets rainwater and stuff, it'll start to rust and then you'll get rust water dripping all over everything. All right, before we work on anything electrical with the truck, we wanna make sure we remove the negative battery cable off the battery just so we don't do any kind of short or fry anything. We've got the wiring harness that goes on the back of the light bar here and I've ran that through the hole in our max lighter bracket and we are ready to fish this through the hole that we just drilled in the truck. Uh, it's important to make sure that we put it through the bracket before the truck or we're gonna have to cut the wires and fix it later or pull all of our wires back out. All right, I've got the whole strand of wires run all the way to where the bracket meets the top of the windshield where we're gonna need it mounted. Um, so this part, our positives and our ground wires are going to split off and go different directions. Our positive wires are gonna run down the A pillar here. So we're gonna pop this airbag cover off so that we can have access to fish that wire through. This pops off pretty easy. And then you can just leave that hanging. I've got a piece of mechanics wire attached to my wire harness. That's just gonna help me feed it through. And then you can follow this drain that already runs down that same direction. And then you'll see your wire come down here. We should also mention that we've removed the door on this truck, not because it's required to install our light bar, but just to make filming a little bit easier. So this is a step you do not need to follow. All right, we've got our wire through the bottom of this little access panel here. The next run is gonna be from there down to under our glove box where we'll ultimately run through into the engine bay. So to make this a little bit easier, we're gonna go ahead and pop off this grab handle, the plastic trim coverings all the way down to here and our glove box. All right, we've got four T30 bolts to take this grab handle off. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pull this panel off. There's two clips at the bottom here, and then two more at the top. Well, maybe six. To get the kick panel out, we need to first remove this piece here. This also just pops off. I'm gonna pull my floor mat out. And now we can get to our kick panel. The last step's gonna be removing the glove box. Just open it up. There's gonna be two push tabs, one on each side. Push that in, that will unlock it to drop down. And then we need to take this strut out. This just pushes up. 
and then you can pull it out to unclip it. The glove box needs to open all the way down for you to before you can pull it out, and then it just comes off the hooks at the bottom. All right, there's three eight millimeter bolts that hold this coolant reservoir in. We've taken those out and set the reservoir aside. You can do this without disconnecting any hoses. This is just gonna give us better access to the grommet that we're gonna run our wires through. All right, this is the grommet we're gonna go through. Uh, I'm gonna cut a little hole right here for us to slip our harness through. Uh, if you're gonna do that, just be very careful that you don't cut any of these wires. And then we'll have to cut another slit in the same side on the inside of the truck because this grommet has two sides to it. And then once both sides are cut, we can use we can slip that wire through and pull it into the engine bay. Now that we've brought our positive wires into the engine bay, we're gonna run them over to our battery where we're gonna mount our relay box. We are powering our light bar with the Rough Country relay box. This is optional. You guys can power them with your own relays if you wish. This is what we use here just to make all of our trucks consistent because we're gonna power multiple accessories so it's nice to just have one consolidated relay box. If you use this, we're gonna go ahead and mount it over our battery. Take off both of the nuts that hold on the battery bracket and this sits right on top. And then we can go ahead and tighten those both back down. We tie our relay box directly to the battery. So the positive cable coming off the relay box is gonna go right on one of these auxiliary power terminals on your battery. And the ground can be grounded right here on the fender. Now, since we've got two positives to power, we are going to use two relays off of this to power those. This box was designed to have six relays for the six switches on the inside of the truck. Since we always use two for the light bar, uh, we end up making these relays for switch two, three, four, five, and then the last two are both for six. Switch one on the Bronco has enough amperage that we don't need a relay to power stuff with, so that's why we skip the relay out for that switch. This is the harness that controls the relays off of the relay box. If you're using the relay box and you're using the same relays we are using, which is five and six, relays number five and six, we're going to use the brown wire and the blue wire. And since we're using two relays, we're gonna use one auxiliary switch to trigger both relays so the whole light bar comes on together at once. So these two wires are gonna get twisted together and we're going to crimp connect them to, in our case, the yellow and orange wire coming off the Ford harness here, which is for switch six. If you're using an auxiliary switch on the inside of the truck different than six, you'll need to use the corresponding wire for that switch. All right, we finished our wiring down here. I'm gonna go ahead and put our cover on our relay box. If you use one of these, uh, before you shut your hood, double check the clearance here. Sometimes you have to modify the hood insulation a little bit just to get it to clear okay. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and head back up top and wrap up our wiring there. All right, now that we've finished wiring up our positive wires, we are going to put our grounds on. So we left these hanging out up here. We're going to put these on a bolt right here that holds our weather seal on. So we're gonna pull these out a little bit longer than the length to that bolt just so that there's some extra slack if we ever need to move it or trim it up. And we're gonna cut them off there. Strip them both, put on our heat shrink 
and crimp a ring terminal onto there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take the nut off of this bolt so we can put our eyelid on it. All right, now that we've got our nut removed, I'm gonna use a little bit of rough sandpaper to sand the paint off right here so that way our ring terminal gets a good ground. All right, so with our ground done and our positive wires ran down the A-pillar, we are done up here, so we can go ahead and button all this stuff up. We're gonna just pop all the plastic trim back in the place as it goes. Before we put this piece up, it's important to make sure that the grounds are coming right out where I've got mine coming out. Back here, there's this slot here. And if you remember earlier when we took the passenger side visor out, the visor's actually got a hook that's gonna hook right here on this ledge. So if our wires are sitting there, we're gonna have a real hard time putting our visor in. So just make sure that they're over here in this separate little oval part, and that'll keep them out of the way from interfering with the visor. So with that in, we're gonna just go ahead and pop this guy back up. We're gonna put this back on too. Slips in through the top here, and then the rest of it just clips in. Don't forget to plug your visor back in. And then the last piece just pops back in. All right, with all the wiring finished up down below, we're ready to seal up the hole we drilled in our Bronco earlier. Um, it's important to make sure you've got enough wire sticking out here that you're gonna reach to the end of the light bar. I've already made sure that I did. And now I'm going to lift this bracket up and seal up this hole. We use strip caulk from 3M. Um, this stuff has worked really well for us. You can also use uh, whatever kind of silicone or sealant you choose. But this is what we use. It's really pliable and easy to work with. And then once you're sure that you've got that sealed up, it's also good to pour water on this and test to make sure that you get no water on the inside of your Bronco. It'll be much more difficult to go back and seal this up after you've installed your light bar than if you just catch it now. So we would always recommend testing that before putting your bracket down and bolting up your light bar. But once you've confirmed this is good to go, you're ready to slide your bracket back down We'll put the two same nuts that we removed earlier for the plastic cover on to secure this light bar bracket and we're going to leave it loose so that way we've got adjustment whenever we go to put our light bar between them. All right, I'm going to remove our cover on the other side as well. We've got a bracket to put on this side too. All right, and with both of these loose enough to be able to adjust, we're ready to put our light bar between them. All right, with both of our brackets on and loose, we're ready to put our light bar up. This is a lot easier if you've got someone to give you a hand. All right, with our light bar tightened, we're ready to go ahead and plug it in. And I'm gonna tuck my wiring in that channel underneath of the light bar. Our last step is going to be tightening our 10 millimeter nuts that hold our brackets on. Okay. All right, once we've made sure that we have tightened our light bar to our brackets, that our brackets are tightened to our vehicle, we've sealed off the hole that we drilled, that we've got our ground attached to a proper clean ground, our powers are wired properly through a relay with at least 14 gauge wire, we should be ready to go ahead and test our light bar. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that I've tested to know sure that we've got our light bar working properly, I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble all of our interior plastics. Now that we've put everything back together and tested to make sure it works, Install is complete, go enjoy your light bar.